Reading your comments with Jacksepticeye. Hey Sean, do you find it offense when people say only 12 year olds watch you? It is kind of the joke to say like, oh, only kids watch you or only 13 year olds watch your channel. And uh, believe me, I'm in no disbelief as to what the age group of people generally probably watch my content are probably pretty young. At least a while ago, a lot of people were very young, especially when I was doing stuff like Happy Wheels and Skate 3 and those kinds of things. I think there was a lot of very young people on the channel. I think some of them have kind of moved off now as I've kind of started to grow up more with the channel and more people are coming in now. I don't know. I don't know what the actual age demographic for the channel is now. According to my analytics on the channel, it says that the main people who watch me are 20 plus year olds instead of actual kids, but we all know that people can lie about their age. But it doesn't really offend me because it's just silly that people would try and use that as some sort of way of bringing you down. Um, and it's also, it's kind of a tone deaf insult as well from a lot of people. If it's another YouTuber saying it to you, it's kind of like, well, you, you have to understand that the main audience of people who watch YouTube are kids. Maybe not 12 year olds, but they're all teens and younger. Mainly, because those are the people who have the time to actually watch YouTube religiously. Unless you're, you're a niche channel with a very specific thing catered towards adults. Most channels that have a huge number of either subscribers or viewership on each of their videos are probably mainly watched by kids. Most of the stuff out there that has a huge viral, um, a, a, a huge viral viewership to it is watched by kids. That's just the, the main viewership of YouTube, because these are the people who have the most amount of time. They come home, they do their homework, they watch YouTube, diff different things like that. Um, so no, I don't really get offended by it. I, I think that the channel is kind of... I, I think the channel has grown up a bit in the last year. I don't think it's mainly a lot of kids that watch the channel anymore. And that kind of just happened naturally. The way I was doing YouTube and some of the games I was playing, stuff kind of just evolved a bit that way. But no, I don't find it offensive. Why weren't you in YouTube Rewind 2017? I talked a bit about this in a vlog I did a while ago. I can't remember what the name of the vlog was. But I, when YouTube Rewind came out, I, I uploaded a vlog talking about various different things. But I mentioned why I wasn't in YouTube Rewind 2017. The first one was when they asked me, I didn't really have time. But then the more I thought about it, well, they asked me and I didn't have time, but I also didn't want to do what they wanted me to do. I think they asked me originally to like, do the meme thing where you're like, flying through space or something. I can't remember exactly, but... I, I, the more I thought about it, the less I wanted to do it because YouTube in 2017 were just god awful. They didn't talk to their creators, they didn't support their creators. A lot of stuff hammered down their creators, which from a business standpoint, the part of me understood. But them not talking to their creators about it left this really weird juxtaposition between um, enti or corporate entity and the people who basically built their platform. So I didn't want to be in a video with them kind of promoting their platform for the entire year and pretend like everything was okay and everything was all hunky-dory and all just memes when really it was probably the worst year that the platform has ever had. Um, so just little things like that. If Jacksepticeye did not do YouTube, what would he do as a job? I think we all know I'd be part of the world's sickest K-pop groups. I'd, I'd probably be part of BTS or something and just be like, hey, uh, annyeonghaseyo, uh, homies. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I really wish I was in K-pop though. I wish I could dance. Jack, what is your favorite Zelda game? Okay, there's a little bit to this answer. I'm gonna answer your question straight out, which is your avatar, your profile picture, which is Breath of the Wild. That's far and away my favorite Zelda game, but it's for a reason, and that's because I've never actually played many other Zelda games. I... I played A Link Between Worlds when that came out because I, I had just gotten a 3DS and I was like, I need a good game to play this on, and... I got it to play that game, and I really, really liked it, but it didn't really stick with me the way Breath of the Wild did, and I didn't finish it. And I also tried playing Wind Waker, but I didn't have time when I was playing that. I was playing the remake of it, and what other ones? I tried playing Twilight Princess a while ago, I didn't get much further into that, and I tried playing Majora's Mask. Actually, I played Ocarina of Time too. I played a lot of them. But I, I only played them for like an hour, but then I just fell in love with my Switch and started playing Breath of the Wild non-stop in my spare time. Like any time that was spent away from videos, I was just playing that game and I completed it and I freaking loved it. 
It was so good. Jack, do you think you'll ever take up Korean again? You're one-fifth of the reason I'm learning it, by the way. I don't know how becoming one-fifth of the reason plays into that. I'm sure you have your reasons, but that's cool. Good luck with it. I, I hope that you, um, you keep going with it. I, I kind of gave up because I didn't really have a use for it anymore. I was learning Korean because I was going out with a Korean girl at the time, and it was very, very... <laughs> there was a very good reason for learning it then. But after that ended, I kind of didn't really have a way of practicing it regularly. Uh, practicing it regularly. I'm still learning English, as you can see. Uh, but, I mean, I'd love to go back to it, but I need... I need more of a reason than just it being cool. Because uh, it was really awesome, and I love the fact that I, I became semi-fluent in another language that had never really happened before, but because I had gone to Korea, because I was talking to somebody in Korean, like, all the time, and I was just surrounded by it, that's a way easier way of learning a language than if I was just to sit down here and go over notes and notes and notes, because then... I don't study well, I'm, I'm a very visual-based person, and a lot of the Korean stuff I picked up was through body language. And through the body language of saying certain things, it kind of stuck in my head a bit more than just reading it on a page. If that makes any sense. I don't know. I don't know how my brain learns, but... Man, I would love to. It, it's such... For anyone who wants to learn Korean, or if you want to learn an Asian language at all, Korean, I think, is the easiest one to learn. Mainly because of the way their characters are written. Because Japanese and Chinese have more complex characters in their alphabet, which is where Korean has very, very simplistic characters in their alphabet. It was designed that way by King Sejong. Bless up. And he... Was it King Sejong? I don't know, God. I'm acting all confident and stuff now and I probably don't know what I'm talking about, but... It was made to be in syllables. So their syllables are stacked. And it's so easy to learn how to read Korean. And just the way the language is all put together and everything. I found it incredibly easy to start picking up. Um, so I think if I went back to it, I, I always watch stuff here and there like K-pop music videos or I, I watch Korean shows here and there. I go back and I watch stuff from like Running Man or uh, Muhan Dojun and stuff like that and I'm like, oh, I remember those words or I see it different places or like playing Overwatch and watching some of the Korean um, esports players there. Just seeing it different places. I, some of it all like came flooding back, so I think I'd pick it up again pretty easily if I went back. Why weren't you at elf practice? Because I don't need to go to practice anymore, okay? I went to I went to two semesters, and then everyone was like, "Wait, you don't need to be here anymore. You're a perfect elf." So I graduated with honors immediately before finishing the four-year mandatory course. So get off my dick. What are you most excited for in 2018? I don't really have like a specific project or a specific video or a spe specific idea that I'm looking forward to most. The thing I'm looking forward to most in 2018 is just... Uh, I don't, I, uh, how, do I, how do I phrase what I want to say? I'm most looking forward to the act of doing. Because I mean, I, just like leaving, leaving the sluggish year behind and going the complete opposite direction and going so super hard at all my projects and really involving myself in it again. Because I got very disconnected with what I was doing for various different reasons, I'm not going to get into that, but... I, I'm I'm looking forward to getting back into what I what I love doing and I think you can tell from the videos that I've recorded in like the last two weeks or since I came back from the break from Christmas I've been just so much more in tune with what I want I'm more I'm so much more in tune with recording videos again I'm excited about it again I'm really into what I do and I'm trying to make it like a fun entertaining kind of thing to do again instead of just doing it to be like oh I need to wake up and record videos again and, and doing it when I when I feel the energy for it, rather than just doing it for the sake of doing it. Like right now, it's it's 1 a.m. right now, and I haven't done anything all day because I wasn't feeling it. And now this sudden like burst of energy has come out of me, and now I want to record. So I don't know. I'm just excited about the change that's about to come this year. I, I think it's going to be a really positive impact on the channel, and I'm I'm excited for you guys to be part of it as well. Do you ever play a game just for fun, but still act like you're recording? I get this one a lot too. A lot of people ask me this, but not kind of, but not really. Because when I when I record games, obviously I'm doing a commentary. I'm entertaining. I'm I'm putting on like a, a show in a sense. So I can't just sit back and like let stuff happen. I, I I need to interact. I need to engage. So any thoughts that are going on in my head are coming out verbally. But normally, if I'm recording or if I'm just playing games at home, anyway. 
if I'm on my own, I- not really, but if other people are kind of around me, I am very vocal when I play games. Just because that's the way I am, that's the way I play games, and that's why I've said anything that I do in my videos isn't fake. It's- it's maybe me turned up to 11, but it's still me, that's just kind of the way I am anyway. What do you like most about what you do? Honestly, as cliche as it is to say this kind of stuff, it's- it's the community aspect of what I do that's the most fun part of it all. Interacting with the people who watch your content. Because YouTube is a very unique type of platform in that regard. You can be an actor and you can make a movie, but there's so much time between when you start that project, when you get the role in that project, to when it's actually out and you can interact with people about it, Compared to what YouTube is, whereas I record this video now, it's probably gonna go up tomorrow and I get direct feedback from you always, all the time. It can be a bit overloading sometimes and some people from traditional media might think that that's a bad thing because it's too much, it's too much stimulus all the time. I love it. I love being so heavily involved with the community. I love... I, I just love being in the thick of it. I love interacting with all of you. I love talking with you. I love getting that vibe from what the channel is and seeing where people's heads are at and just meeting new people and seeing everybody from different walks of life. I, I'm just fascinated by humankind and human behavior and why people do the things they do. So just getting feedback from you all the time is a, is a really great like peek behind that curtain. What's the best pickup line you've known? They're lame, but there's two that always kind of stick with me. One of them, which I heard again recently, was it... Uh, God, what game was I playing? Uh, oh, House Party, where he said, I lost my phone number, can I have yours? It's so cheesy, it's so dumb, but I just like it. And another one is, <laughs> it's a bit more straightforward, which is, <laughs> did you sit in sugar? Because you got a sweet ass. <laughs> What did you think of The Last Jedi? I thought the part where Kylo and Leia did that dance battle to Africa by Toto was kind of strange. Also that part where Kylo ate raw eggs for 17 minutes straight was hot too. <laughs> First off, well done, great memes. Secondly, I actually didn't like it all that much. When, I, when we went to watch it, it was me, Cena, Ethan and Robin went to watch it after we did the charity stream. And I had high expectations for it because First off, I, I, well, I didn't really have that high expectations originally, but then Disney came out and said that Ryan Johnson had gotten his own original trilogy that he was allowed to do after he directed this one. So I was like, holy shit, whatever he did in this movie must have really shaken some boots and really instilled a lot of confidence in Disney to allow him to do his own trilogy. So then I had high expectations for it. And then I heard a lot of people say really good things about it, but when I went in to watch it, I don't know, it wasn't even that I had high expectations and they were not met. Because I had high expectations for The Force Awakens too, and they weren't really meant, but I still enjoyed that movie. But The Last Jedi just has so many pacing issues. There's so many writing and dialogue issues. There's so many character arcs and plots and subplots and everything that are going on. I'm like, why is this even in the movie? This literally goes nowhere. There's stuff with... Um, well, I'm gonna get slightly into spoilers. If you haven't seen it and you're super sensitive to spoilers, don't listen to me right now. Um, but the stuff with like Finn and Rose going down to that planet literally served no purpose. Like by the end of it, their characters went nowhere. It's sure, there's a little bit of stuff at the end of it, but it's just so many dumb decisions, so much stuff that makes no sense that I don't think should have been in it. There are some fantastic moments. There's a scene in the middle of it. Ah, I don't want to spoil stuff, but the, the hyper speed scene. Um, the- the warp speed scene, if any of you know what I'm talking about. That was some of the coolest imagery I've ever seen. Um, some of the stuff with Kylo and Rey was fucking phenomenal, I love that, but there was just so much of it that fell so flat. And it felt a lot of what was set up in The Force Awakens just went nowhere, or was just cut out, and then they didn't do anything with it because they didn't want to. I don't know, I, I, I just, it left a bad taste in my mouth. It's the first time I've ever watched a Star Wars movie where I don't want to watch it again. What music have you been listening to recently? I've been listening to a lot of K-pop, especially BTS, because I, I didn't really get into them when everybody else was talking about them a really big way, but BTS are pretty good. Jack, what is the lock screen and home screen background on your phone? Okay, so I saw this picture on Reddit earlier in the year and it was just the cutest thing I've ever seen. So I put it as my lock screen and my home screen because every time I unlock my phone now I get to see the cutest image, which is this. 
Oh uh, god, it's this tiny dog in a jacket with his arms in the air. It's so fucking cute. I love it so much. So now every time I unlock my phone, it's like, <laughs> oh, it's the best. Have you ever seen slash been a part of musical theater? P.S. I hope to meet you someday and I love you. Thank you. That's very sweet. I hope to meet you someday as well. But I have, I haven't been, I've seen some musical theater, but ages and ages ago when I was a teenager. Oh, that was years ago. Or, but I have been part of some theater, just not musical theater. I was, well I guess it was musical theater, I just didn't sing anything myself. But I was part of some like acting stuff when I was in secondary school when I was like, 16? 16 and 17 I think. I was, I was Friar Tuck in a Robin Hood, uh, men in tights kind of thing that we did. And I had to wear like a really big fat belly suit. And then the next year we did Bugsy Malone. And I was the titular character, I was Bugsy. Um, and that was really fun, I really liked that. And Bugsy Malone has some songs in it, but we we changed it around, we didn't do a lot of those because we didn't have the production. But I, re I really like doing those. I, I just love acting in all its forms, and I'd love to get into it in a more serious capacity. What do you think is the saddest on-screen slash cinematic death has to be, without doubt, Harry Potter in the Chamber of Commerce. That hit, that hit me so hard, I cried. What are we gonna do, Ron? We can't let this law pass into legislation. <laughs> are there any other hobbies, like drumming, you'd like to take up but just haven't had the chance to start? Man, there's so many. There's so many hobbies that I want to take up, but... I know that if I start trying to do them all, then I'll just not enjoy any of them. So Some of them, like, which would be hobbies for now, is like, singing or acting. Those kinds of things. I'd love to just learn more about my voice. And learn more about how to how to act in different scenarios and things like that. I, that that stuff is just so cool. Um, I'd love to learn how to dance, but I don't think there's many like amazing dance schools around here. And it's also a case of me just not having the time to do them and dedicate a lot of time to doing them properly. Because if I if I was going to do them, I'd love to do them properly and, and really get some progress out of them. But I'd also like to I'd also like to learn more keyboard. Just for music sense, um, having drums is great, but I, I'd like to learn a more melodic instrument and have something that I could actually write, like, full music to. But, again, I'm more... I'm more visually inclined, and I, I just don't have the brain to listen, to sit down and learn music theory and that kind of stuff. But I did buy a keyboard recently and haven't set it up or anything yet, but maybe if I just start messing around with that, we'll see what happens. Is cereal soup? Oh my god. I've never thought about that before. Have I been eating cold soup? Every morning, all along? But I hate cold soup! How can this be?! And that does it for this reading your comments video! Yes, I know, it's been a while since the last one. I'm so sorry. They just get away from me, and it's, it's also a case of that I've done so many of them. That by now, I'm kind of getting the same questions over and over again. Or I try and pick questions that have a bit more meaning to them, or I can talk a bit more about them, while also having the jokier answers. Because if it's just all jokes all the time, then I feel like... Th the reason I started doing these videos is not there anymore. Because I love the sense of community that evolves out of these videos. I love just being able to talk openly with people, and whenever something comes up, these were always a great outlet to be able to do that. That's why I always said that I'd love to start a podcast, because it's a way for me to... Put more of my personality out there for you guys to be able to interact with and get more of my thoughts out there because when I'm recording a gameplay, I don't really get to like talk about relevant topical things and I might not have talked about any here either, but that's what reading comments were always kind of about. And if I ever did a podcast, you'd be able to get more topical um, subject matter that's more relevant to the time we're in right now. So, I, I want to do more of these again, and I, I'd love to get more comments from you guys. If you have any comments that are any questions that you would like me to answer, um, just leave them in the- I was gonna say in the description below, that's not where they go. Leave me a comment down below on this video, and I'll try and take some of them for the next episode, but thank you guys, but also, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, a punch that like button in the face, like a pause, and I face up round. Thank you guys, and I will see you on your dudes!
I have a sore back. I'm an old man. My bones are dust. 